one thing the state did not discuss is obviously there was the aspect of provocation in this case. Mr. Edgecombe, I don't know what was going through your head. Whatever happened initially, and I don't believe the testimony or the implication that you were hit by the clearman's car and you rolled up on their side of the car or the front of the car, that's not plausible because your bike was not damaged, you weren't injured, there was no visible damage to the car, that's not plausible. But whatever did occur, for you to be so hot under the collar that rather than ignore it or drive by and handle it in some other fashion, you slug through a window and do significant damage to the victim, punching him in the face and in the eye and knocking his glasses off, causing abrasions and cuts. I can't imagine what was going through your head and why you thought that was an appropriate way to respond to whatever happened initially that was not caught on camera. And then again, ultimately, Mr. Edgecombe, there was no need whatsoever, even if, and yes, Mr. Clearman was striding towards you, for you to pull a gun and within a matter of a couple of seconds, put a bullet in his skull. I apologize that that's a very candid description of what occurred, but that's what occurred. Having said that, I'm sensing the defendant as follows, largely following the state's recommendation, 25 years of initial confinement, 12 years of extended supervision. That's on count one. That is the absolute minimum required to punish the defendant, to incarcerate him, to send a deterrent community deterrent message to this community. 25 years of initial confinement, 12 years of extended supervision. This was an, a homicide. That sentence is consecutive to any other case, consecutive to any other sentence. And count two, which is the bail jumping, sentencing the defendant to a total of four years, two years of initial confinement, two years of extended supervision, that sentence is concurrent to count one, concurrent to count three, and concurrent to any other sentence. In count three, which is the misdemeanor bail jumping, I'm sentencing the defendant to six months in the House of Corrections or in jail. That sentence is concurrent to count two and concurrent to count one. It's the court's specific intent that the defendant serves 25 years of initial confinement, 12 years of extended supervision. In this case, the defendant is not eligible for the challenge incarceration program, not eligible for the substance abuse program. The defendant will be provided a written explanation of the determinant sentence. While in the institution, I'm authorizing up to the maximum amount be taken out of the defendant's in custody earnings, wages, funds, or monies of any sort. I'm granting the state's request for restitution, which was stipulated to the restitution amount is $4,840. The restitution is to be paid to the victim's wife. Conditions of extended supervision are as follows. First of all, because this matter is a felony, Mr. Edgecombe is not allowed to own or possess a firearm, a gun, at any time ever for the rest of his life. He's not allowed to vote in any elections until his civil rights are restored. They will be restored at some time in the future. But until then, you're not allowed to vote. Mr. Edgecombe, you will have the right to appeal. An appeal would have to be filed within 20 days. Conditions of extended supervision are as follows. First of all, no, no further law violations rising to the level of probable cause. Mr. Edgecombe is not allowed to own or possess a gun or a weapon of any kind. Mr. Edgecombe, when you're released, you are obligated to work full time. You're to pay restitution if it's not already been paid while you're in the institution. I'm ordering the defendant to pay all costs, fees, and surcharges, both mandatory and non-mandatory costs, fees, and surcharges. They're to be paid first while in the institution, then if not paid while in the institution, paid while on extended supervision. While on extended supervision or while in the institution, I want the defendant to have an AOD assessment for any drug or alcohol needs. If there are any AOD needs, he's to be treated in the institution or while on extended supervision. While on extended supervision, Mr. Edgecombe is not allowed, strike that, 
I'm ordering absolute sobriety. Mr. Edgecombe is not allowed to drink alcohol. He's not allowed to use any illegal drugs. Beyond those conditions, I'm going to leave the further conditions of extended supervision up to the Department of Corrections. Again, in this case, because of the nature of this offense, the defendant is not eligible for the Challenge Incarceration Program and not eligible for the Substance Abuse Program. I will provide the defendant with a written explanation of the sentence in this case. Again, the defendant has a right to appeal. An appeal would have to be filed within 20 days. I'll ask the state, am I forgetting anything? I leave anything out? No. Defense? No, Your Honor. Pardon me. All right, then we're adjourned. We're off the record. Thank you. There we saw the defendant's face for the first time, a pool feed that was able to show him as he turned around in the courtroom. There you have it. The judge has rendered his sentence 25 years initial confinement, 12 years extended supervision.